Hey everybody, it's Kelly Beezer from Shutter and Glass Photography, and today we are talking about head swaps in Photoshop. I am a kids and family photographer, which means that I'm not photographing models. I am photographing real families with real people who aren't always going to look picture perfect, especially not all at the same time. And so um, head swaps have become kind of key to making um, those group photos, at the very least, work and um, keeping you know me happy with the results I'm delivering and keeping my clients happy with the results I'm delivering. So today we are going to be looking at this photo of a client family that I adore. I love working with them year after year. They are sweet, they are amazing together, they have a great dynamic and um, they're just, they're just one of my favorites. And so I love this photo of them. I love the way mom and dad are looking at each other. I love the way the boys are looking at their parents. Um, but the oldest brother here, um, it looks like he's getting ready to say something or he's getting ready to burst out laughing, which is super cute. And yet it's not the most flattering expression for his face. And so I wanna give him kind of this nice smiling face that the rest of the family has. So I found this photo where he's got a really nice gentle expression, but you know, mom's closing her eyes and dad's in the middle of a sentence and he looks bored. <laughs> So what I want to do is I want to transfer this face onto this photo. And it's perfect because they're both in the same location. They have the same light situation. Um, I already edited, you know, the global white balance and, um, you know, any changes I had to make an exposure. So I've got those big global edits done, um, which means that both pictures match so that when I do transfer this face on, to, or this face rather, onto this photo, um, they should match up pretty easily. Um, that being said, I always save any sort of like creative edits, any sort of overlays or, you know, cropping, dodging, burning, anything like that um, until the very end. That way, when I do transfer this face, it's not mismatched right over here because if I, if I did a bunch of editing on this, then this, you know, as it is now would look strange. So, with that being said, head swaps often have so much more to do about blending in the background than it does actually the face. So, I'm going to select an area here to copy onto the other photo. Uh, that being said, if I just selected this, I wouldn't have a lot to work with as far as blending in, and I'd probably get really frustrated. So, you can either use this lasso tool to select a big area, or I actually like using the rectangular marquee tool, just like this. And you can see I'm selecting a good bit of dad, I'm selecting a ton of that wall behind them, all of their legs, and I've got this all selected now. Um, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all this over and we'll blend it in with a layer mask. And I'll show you just how to do that. But first we're gonna press Command C, which is just, if you like using menus instead, it's Edit Copy. And then we're gonna come over here, press Command V, which if you like using menus, is Edit Paste. And we're just gonna move this guy over right here and kind of try to put it in the spot where we think it should go. And you can see I'm just matching up like the bottom of dad's shirt right here, like up and down. And that's right about where I think he'll go. I'm gonna bring down the opacity just a little bit. Okay, so now you can see we need to match the heads up. Bringing down that opacity, just let me see what's going on underneath. and. I think that's going to be about as close as we're going to get. So I'll bring that opacity back up. And now we've got to work to blend it in because you can see there's like this really harsh line here um, that's kind of giving away that something's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask. Maybe. <laughs> a layer mask. There we go. And all this does is create this white window. And white on a layer mask on a layer mask means that it is revealing what is on the layer below it. If I change it to black, you can see it's hiding everything that's on this layer. So we're gonna change it back to white. But we want to hide some of it. So I'm gonna come up here to my brush. I'm gonna change this to black. You could also do with that with X to toggle back and forth between black and white. And I've got the opacity up to 100% because I really do wanna hide 100% of what I'm gonna be brushing here. But I've got the hardness down to 0% because I want it to be super soft so that we can blend things in. So. We're gonna be removing all of dad's expression here, right? Because we wanna see the expression that's underneath. And just like that, it's like magic. Layer masks are a big part of the reason that I love Photoshop so much. It gives me so much control over editing um, and lets me do these big changes like I'm doing here um, without stress. So you can see as I'm going in here, 
there's a good bit of evidence that I'm I'm messing with it. Like we can't have two button plackets hanging out there. But luckily, Dad is wearing not a super patterned shirt. Chambray is much easier to blend in than a, you know plaid or like Mom's amazing kimono here. I should have asked her where she got that because I really like it. <laughs> um, where we're gonna start, I think, getting a little tricky is with the hem of Dad's shirt. Maybe. Oh wait, no. Look at that. This is a believable blending mode here. I don't think anybody would look at this photo and be like, ooh, I think she photoshopped that. Um, we got lucky there, guys. Sometimes you have to finagle a little bit more than that. Um, okay, I was expecting that to be a lot harder. <laughs> I just made it look that easy, guys. It's that easy every time for me when you're a professional. No, I'm teasing. Typically what I have to do is I have to toggle back and forth quite a bit more between black and white. Oh, wait, here we go. I missed a spot. Um, and you just toggle back and forth between the white brush and the black brush and you keep blending things in until you have everyone looking the way you want them. Um, this one I got lucky. I think it looks pretty darn good. Um, yeah. What I would recommend if you're ever editing something like this, um, you'll want to walk away for like 10 minutes. Give your eyes a break from the computer screen come back and see if there's anything that you would want to change or anything that you noticed that you were, you know, I call it screen blind. Um, if you were screen blind before, um, you know, just give your eyes a rest so that you can see any areas that might give away that you use some Photoshop magic. The idea is that you want it to look super believable um, and you don't want anybody to know that, you know, they weren't perfect and all gazing at each other lovingly all at the same time in this session. So that's how you do a head swap, guys. Again, the big thing is use your layer masks and focus on blending in what's surrounding the face rather than focusing so much on the face because that's where you're going to find that you can get really great, believable results. So if you have any questions about this method or Photoshop or layer, layer masks or anything that I talked about in here, don't hesitate to let me know. I am always happy to answer your questions in the comments below. And uh, let me know how head swapping goes for you. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.